Now, you see, in, in, in entrepreneurship, though, uh, is it, people falsely accuse entrepreneurs of being, uh, of being high risk. Okay, but, but here's, here's the deal. I'll prove to you that we are not. Okay, are you ready for this? This, 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 this is good. Um, uh, let's say at this point in my life, um, my businesses went south because of some risk or some whatever happened. Okay, and I was bankrupt. Okay, and my house is gone. Everything was gone. Now, do you think I could call up a few people that I've met in the industry, get them to promote a series of interviews I'm going to do that I haven't even prepared for yet, and sell it for like a hundred bucks a piece? I would think you definitely. Could. Okay, you think I can make maybe ten to fifteen to twenty or a hundred thousand dollars that week? I would hope so. From doing that, I probably can. Yeah. Okay, especially if there's a story behind it, like Rick is bankrupt. Okay, <laughs> okay. So here's what he's going to do for that. you, right? Okay. So, so, uh, so how how can anyone accuse me of taking a, a too big of a risk? Okay, and, and now here is what powers that. Okay, this, this this is the big gem here. Okay, I'm not investing in my business. It might look that way because of where the cash flow is going. I'm investing in myself. Okay, that's the key. All of us as entrepreneurs are. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm creating relationships that I keep even if I go bankrupt. Even if I sell the company, I keep those relationships, okay, unless there's certain contracts. But I, I'm creating knowledge. I have experience and wisdom that I didn't have before. Um, and, uh, and all of that works in my favor now. And so I'm by, by becoming an entrepreneur, I'm investing in myself. My power to, to create income and money and add value to the world is, is unlimited and unassailable. No one can take that away from me, unless disability or, or death. <laughs> okay. but, but if I achieve the right business models and, and, the, and business management, then my, the, the, the money-making machines, the value creation machines I've created, will even survive my death. Okay. So the only, the only question is, will all my businesses survive me or not? But, whether or not, but, but, um, but I get to live my entire life knowing that I can produce what I need to live and thrive and, and enjoy life. So what does it take for the new entrepreneur to succeed? Rick believes there are three key qualities and explained them best in an email he wrote on why seemingly common sense business strategies sometimes only work for a few. Almost all brilliant strategies and even tactics can be dismissed as common sense. Yet somehow people like Armin, Morin, Evan Pagan, and so on are making tens of millions of dollars every year. Uh, with all these common sense sure. strategies. Okay, and first of all, I agree with that. I think almost all brilliant strategies are common sense. Okay, but, but do you actually do them? So what's the, what's the difference between the Armin Morans of the world and the people, people who say they, is this is common sense? I say it's three things. Number one is discipline. That was, that was, that was the D word. That was the D word. Discipline, actually doing the things you know you should do. That's the key right there, okay? It goes into passion because passion gives you the power to do the thing you want to do. But, but really, it comes down to discipline. Um, doing the things that you know you should do. Humility, so you put yourself in a position to learn new things that you should be doing. And then mastery, that which you only get from doing it. You see, you know, here we are earlier today, we were recommending people do interview products as their first product. For a whole lot of good reasons. I mean, a lot of good reasons. But are they going to make $100 million from their interview product? No. Okay. Well, guess what? Brevity is the name of this new course we have because we're summarizing everything. Um, we're spending a quarter of a million dollars on doing the Brevity course. Now, we have a very cool viral campaign with this, and we have upsells up the wazoo. If we get a million people to, to sign up through our viral and th th there's more than a million business owners. If we, if we get a million people to sign up you know, for the dollar trial to, to take part in this and spread the word, and then they upgrade to the $100 level, that's $100 million right there. So that's a $100 million interview product model. Now, it probably won't be that in year one. But it, you know, it has the potential to be something big, and it has that potential on, you know, with our magic calculator. It, it can be that big. So, so how can I do an interview product that has a $100 million potential, um, and someone else will put just as much effort, maybe even just as much money, into creating it, and it won't even be close to that? And, and the model, you could almost look at it having more experience and say, well, of course that wouldn't work. Okay, the answer isn't that you didn't do all the different steps. Maybe, maybe you did. But the mastery comes in where because I've done it once before in the same way and I've done 10 other things like it you know, I've learned from that, I, that have helped me out here, um, I have a better shot at success. I, I'm pretty much guaranteed cash flow positive. With these ideals in mind, 
Rick offers straightforward advice on how to establish your own business. He urges you to begin by identifying your strengths. How can you add the most value to the world? Now, if you, um, if you don't know what the answer to that question is, I've got the answer for you. And? I guarantee it. Now, it doesn't come from me. I, I think it comes from Kiyosaki. But it, the answer is, if you don't know where your passion and our strengths lie, or even if you do, but you know you're not ready to start your own business yet, you don't know, you don't know what, 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 kind of, what kind of business model to use or whatever, the answer is get a job. Okay? But don't get a job for income. Get the job that will train you the best for then starting that business. Okay, so when I, when I read that in Rich Dad Poor Dad, I was like, yes, that's the answer to all these people who ask me these questions, and I know I can tell instantly that they're not ready. Okay, it's, the answer is, okay, you want to be an affiliate? Okay, go get a job at Nitro Marketing working as an affiliate manager, okay, uh, or, what, or whatever, okay, because okay, then they're going to pay you to learn everything there is to know about that industry, okay, and as long as you have your, no, your non-compete, uh, you know, phrased correctly so that you can leverage that knowledge in some way, not, not directly competing and stealing their clients and customers. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be right. But, um, but, but, but so take a job where you learn the most in the area you think you want to play in as an entrepreneur. Rick stresses education and encourages everyone to attend seminars to learn more, get exposed to new ideas, and network. The real world seminar has a role to play too uh, because you can't um, expose yourself to new ideas in your basement or even in a course, really. I mean, you, you get the techniques in the course, but to really expose yourself in a good way to new ideas, you need to get out there. You need to, to um, get out in the real world, pay that hotel bill, pay that, that airfare, and, 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 or drive or do something to get to that hotel ballroom where you meet a bunch of different people doing something and, uh, and, 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 and it's working for them. Um, and, and in, in general, I would say go to the more expensive seminars, okay? but not the ones that promise to give you a business, okay? Because the ones that promise to give you a business, uh, those are more likely the, the scams. Now, there are definitely exceptions. I'm not, I'm not saying that it is a scam. But if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Like, Pay me $20,000, I'll tell you how to make a million. Well, why aren't they out there making a million? Just <laughs> not doing all that hard. A seminar is not an easy thing, right. okay? But, but if it's $20,000, and you're going, to meet, you're going to meet Richard Branson, and you're going to do this, and we're going to have this speaker, that speaker, and, and, and you, you'll be able to join the networking club that we're going to keep on going for the next year. I'll pay $20,000 for that club. Rick believes that an interview product is another good way to begin and share some key insights into the types of opportunities that this can create for you. A lot of gurus, experts, talk about an interview product as being a really good way to start, but, um, but I think they're wrong a lot of times in why. Okay? I think the best, the reason to start off with an interview product is not just because it has high profit margins, and it does. Not just because those high profit margins allow you to fail in, in, uh, numerous times in your marketing and then eventually succeed, okay? but it does, that's good. Not just because those high profit margins allow you to, to do joint ventures, okay? but it does. Okay? That's, that's, again, it's all good. Okay? So, so far, it's all good stuff. I think the most important reason to do an interview product first is because by interviewing people who are already um, achieving success in the niche that you're interested in, you learn from them. You join their network. Opportunities open up to you that they wouldn't have otherwise. I think that's the, the, the most important, most valuable um, thing you get from that because that speaks back to what we were talking about earlier about investing in yourself. You know, that, that those relationships, that networking, uh, that, that becomes very valuable. Rick is exactly where he wants to be. He envisions increasing and expanding his business and profits and being able to see more of his ideas become reality. I'm done. This, I'm, I, this is where I want to be. I, I want to keep on playing in, in this area. Now, I want to be able to do it with more leverage and less risk going forward. So I want to have more income, more cash flow to fund more projects and staff them earlier so I'm not doing any of the groundwork at all. I just write a little email or draw on the whiteboard, hey, I have this idea. Let's put five people on it and make it happen. Rick's journey has been one of successes and setbacks. By developing his strengths and knowledge, he has been able to come up with innovative ideas and to create and pursue opportunities for success. Well, I, I think it's that I go for it. Um, I don't hold back. I, I have an idea and I, I try it. And I try it within you know, all of the resources, you know, all the constraints that I have working against me. You, know, you have to respect what your constraints are. 
but um, I, I, I try to push for it and make the impossible happen.